10 minutes to tell you all about trees, um, which um, uh, is a bit of an ask, so I'll tell you a few things about trees. Um, it's, uh, I'll try and weave it in with some of the uh, discussions that have come up in the last couple of days around um, what trees can do and how they might go about it and what we can do with them. Um, quick outline, um, international environment, um, trees and greenhouse gas mitigation, I mean what does, what is the process, what does it all do? Um, maintaining and enhancing forest carbon sinks, a little along the lines of Louis, trying to see what we've got and how we can protect it uh, and then how we can enhance things. Uh, things to consider about trees and mitigation and climate change and farms and land use and then a little bit about knowledge gaps and where, what things we need to know uh, about uh, the whole system. So, uh, Paris Agreement, starting at the global level. Um, trees are important. Um, the picture down on the right there, forests sort of underpinning um, uh, large components of uh, sort of climate action. People very concerned about forest degradation, forest loss, um, and Article 5 actually explicitly mentions forests. Um, one of the interesting things, uh, we've talked about temporary use of, of, of trees. Reservoirs. I like to think about trees as a reservoir. Um, if you've got a bare piece of land, you plant trees, you're filling your reservoir up, and over time that then fills up, you get to the top and it hits steady state, and you've got the same amount of carbon going forward. So Susie's right, you can run out of land at the end, but it does give you a really good buffer uh, to be able to do other things, though the parliamentary commissioners comment about we need to reduce gross emissions rather than buffer things and not do anything uh, is very relevant. So planting forests can offset long-lived gases because if you plant a permanent forest, you've offset something and it's a certain amount. And they've looked at a paper recently in Nature Climate Change, what you'd need to do in terms of extra forest uh, to actually do the, uh, sort of meet the 1.5 uh, degree. Uh, so there's a lot of planting going on at the moment of new planted forests. The rate of deforestation slowed globally but has just recently sped up again, unfortunately. So, sort of globally, you can see that forests are important, um, though, yeah, 5 to 30% increase by 2100, um, you are sort of pushing things a bit, potentially. But we can talk a little bit more about that in terms of some of the opportunities. So what do trees do, uh, and how do they sort of, and how can they be used to mitigate emissions? We put a bit of a, a diagram together here, um, just about the various things that can do, and trees are far more than just storing carbon to offset emissions on a farm. Um, there are the harvested wood products uh, and a whole raft of other things. So up the top here, yes, you can store carbon in forest biomass. Uh, you get more, more carbon, the bigger the trees. Um, you can also substitute for liquid fossil fuels. So uh, we've done some work for the bioenergy uh, roadmap looking at substituting and how much emission reduction from fossil fuels you'd get. So the bioenergy roadmap work that Simon did. Um, you can substitute for greenhouse gas intensive materials such as steel and concrete. Some numbers down there are from a paper by Andrea Stocchero on the urban equilibrium and the built environment and the effect of wood and forests and trees uh, within the sort of urban uh, environment. Um, storing carbon in long-lived wood products, um, prefabricated constructions one of the coming things. Uh, there's a lot of work going on at the moment about wooden buildings, multi-storey, quick building, prefabs. Um, efficiency of those constructions, 13% emissions reductions. This was a study of, on Auckland uh, urban planning that Andrea did. And if you're just looking specifically at offsetting greenhouse gas uh, from livestock, 26 hectares of new plantation forest every 20 years would look after the emissions of an average 300 cow dairy farm for a period of time until um, you'd sort of hit your straps. Um, that's from the Parliamentary Commissioner report back in back 2016. So there's a raft of different things and also um, quite relevant at the moment, um, soil microbial conversion of methane, uh, which is an interesting soil process. So a variety of things. So I thought I'd just talk a little bit about the opportunities of storing carbon sort of in forest biomass and, and sort of focus in on, on things rather than going really broad. Um, and um, 
This is where we, uh, in New Zealand, we've got about 25% of the land area is in native forest uh, and about 7% in plantation forest. And you can see here, Kaingaroa Forest, large expanses of uh, fairly uniform, uh, intensively managed plantation, um, obviously um, uh, sort of conservation lands. But work we've done recently, um, looking at those existing plantation forests, showed that if you actually look at the uh, potential production on those forests, we're about 18% below what you could do. Uh, and potentially, if you could then intensify these forests through whatever means, um, you could actually store more carbon and get a bit of additionality. So that's one area that an, there's a number of forest companies looking at um, and um, in, sort of looking at increasing carbon stocks, but also you increase the timber uh, and you're offsetting pressure on international um, natural forests and things as well. Natural forests in New Zealand, um, global issues about forest degradation. We have possums. If you control possums, um, the forest health and vitality can improve. Uh, potentially fix more carbon. Again, getting some additionality. So you can do things with existing forests. Um, whether they fit in with sort of regulations and so on and so forth is a moot point, but uh, in terms of the sort of the underlying principles, uh, it's all there. The other option is to plant new forests. So we've talked quite a bit about this, and um, I've got some nice photos of forests for people, just after Victoria this morning, saying lots of uh, forests. Um, there's a whole variety of options. And what we tend to get is that, oh, well, radiata pine, no, we don't want that. Um, well, the options are far broader than radiata pine, uh, blanket planting. Um, great interest at the moment in planting indigenous species, especially from Maori, uh, and looking at what we can do uh, there. It was mentioned yesterday that under the forest sack, you can't necessarily cut them down. We need to sort of think about all of those sorts of things. But a strong interest in indigenous plantations, um, and also with totara and kauri and a variety of others, if you actually manage them quite actively, they do fix carbon quicker than we thought, which is quite nice. They're still slower than um, an exotic species like radiata, where you get fast carbon sinks. I mean, things really crack on, uh, and you can build carbon really quickly. Um, but if you're looking at some of these landscapes, and you saw John Roche yesterday with the example of things that happen downstream, you might not want to do that. Um, you might want to make that a permanent forest that you don't cut down. So there are ways to do that, starting exotic and then maybe migrating into, into native species over time and building your carbon stocks. Um, riparians has come up, uh, and this is, you know, the benefits of carbon here we worked out that you get about 100,000 hectares if you put a riparian zone on the side of all three and a half metre and broader streams, which is quite a lot of carbon. But you also get the added benefits of um, uh, shading, uh, biodiversity, ecology, and a whole raft of things in there. If you put in a high value timber, say Totara, um, in 100 years' time, you might get something interesting. Riparians, um, are one, but infill forests. We talked a little bit about native sort of high quality soils. You could plant trees around your irrigation uh, pivots if you wanted. And then fossil fuel offsetting energy. A uh, number of DHBs are looking to go to biomass. And Sinlay today talked about cogeneration with, with biomass and coal. So a number of opportunities. Um, this is the Billion Trees uh, program. And um, New Zealand's sort of estate at the moment. Um, and potential area that you might grow if you had a billion tree target, the area you need, if you wanted to go to below 50% um, emissions, or the net zero carbon target. There's op options for areas of planting, quite large areas. Uh, you don't need to do it, uh, but it's quite interesting to look at some of those options. And the 70,000 hectares a year that you'd need to replant um, is, is similar, I think, to Susie's numbers. So things to consider. Uh, if you are looking to plant trees, uh, a raft of things, but one of the big things uh, is around things like community. That came up this morning. Um, uh, things like distance to processing and so on and so forth, yes. Uh, but looking at things like if you plant trees, effect on current farm business. We haven't talked about future climate and risks. Forestry is long term, so we do need to think about things there. 
Um, but looking at basically what's your purpose? You're on a farm, you want to do something, why and what do you want to do? And work your way around to come up with a, a, a sort of plan. And following that logically through uh, allows you to make some informed decisions. What do we still need to know? Broke this into four areas. Um, forest carbon cycle. There's certainly some areas of, of things we need to know here. Um, in terms of um, species and site and climate, um, soil microbial processes, can we manipulate those to increase carbon fixation rates? We've ha heard about methane fixation, volatile organic compounds is in the, in the mix at the moment, so there's some interesting questions there. Integrated land use, forestry is a complementary land use to other land uses, um, so how do we actually fit it in, both decision making wise and in terms of comparing apples with apples, in terms of the economics, ecosystem services, the full value and benefits within the landscape, and education com and community acceptance is, is an absolutely critical issue um, for forests and trees. Um, we heard yesterday, you know, blanket planting, schools may close, um, you know, employment might go up. There's all sorts of ways you can work on this, um, and, and um, information and education is, is important. Um, new forest systems, we need to explore those new ideas uh, and actually get out and try some. Some people are doing it. Um, uh, Totara up in Northland, for instance, and factor all this into climate resilience. So at the landscape level, with all the other land uses, yes, but you don't want to plant the wrong trees in the wrong place for a very droughty future. And then thinking around carbon life cycles, Trees and sequestration are only one component. You've got this whole uh, bioeconomy and the wood within that whole region of sort of, you know, starting from trees and working around, long-term storage, buildings, fossil fuel substitution, and so on and so forth. So you get far more out of trees uh, than just what's planted on the ground. So just finish, right tree, right place, right purpose. You need to know what you want to do it for. And the under a changing climate is, is, the, is the critical thing going forward with a long-term crop. And acknowledgements there to quite a range of people who've helped me with slides and ideas and, and bits and pieces. So I'll say thank you.